Good afternoon. Good evening. How are everybody? I know that was not good English, but that's okay. <laughs> Struggling over here. I know with, with the English and everything, right? It was absolutely horrible. But everybody, welcome. My name is Holly. And, and I'm Fatu. Sorry, y'all. Hello, no, human. It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> and we like to welcome you guys to a morning mimosa special. But as you guys know, we put value on criminal justice, promoting healing and education for our Black community. And as you guys heard, I just said a special, right? Um, and I'm really, really um, honored to be speaking with um, this festival that takes place here in Colorado. Um, but before we get into all of that great stuff, we're actually going to welcome our new co-host, Miss Lily. But we're going to do this for her first. <laughs> Hey, boo, let's welcome her to Morning Mimosas. Hey, y'all. Hey, 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 welcome, welcome aboard. Hello, I'm Lily B. I'll be your co-host on Morning Mimosas. It's really exciting to be here. I cannot wait for every Saturday to talk about what really matters in our community. Um, but to introduce myself to y'all, I am an esthetician, a healer, and so much more. I'm also a mortuary transport manager, which people, you know, that sets me aside and, and different from everybody else. But I love what I, I do. Love I'm it. excited. I love it too. Um, I'm excited to be with y'all and your beautiful faces as well. So this is something new to me. Um, like I told everyone, this is my first time on a podcast. I'm really excited to be here. Um, but a little bit about my business. I'm an esthetician. Healer, transport manager, like I said, um, I'll be. I established Be Divine in April of this year. Um, it all started with a dream, where it turned in, uh, turned into my reality, which is really exciting. I'll be moving into my own place on June seventeenth, um, where I'll be offering skincare services, oh. yoni steaming. So come see me. You can visit me at be divine love, and for booking and information. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. But most of all, I'm most excited to be here on Morning Mimosas and talk about what matters most in our community. So thank you for having me and thanks for tuning in today, y'all. So namaste. Hey, tell me, say the name again because it's Be Divine. Be Divine. And Be Divine really means like, I, my motto is Be Divine, Be You. I want you to mm -hmm. be not holy, but spiritual. Be yourself and feel yourself always, but always be divine and be you at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. So it's really, it's really just. I like that. Yes. I love that about her. She is, is absolutely amazing. So we actually have one more guest and I'm actually going to do the hey, welcome again for her. Um, she is speaking on behalf of the Black Arts Festival here in Colorado, Miss Jaleesa McIntosh. So let's give her this welcome first. <laughs> Perfect. Let's welcome her to welcome. Morning Mimosas, everybody. Hey. Hello, everyone. How are you? Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to share um, a little bit about the festival, some of its history, who I am, um, how I came to be with the festival, and then just a few things uh, to expect this year. Um, and then any questions that come up, happy to answer um, and to discuss with you. So thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for welcome, being here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, So um, before we actually get into anything, I'm actually gonna share a video that I found on TikTok of this festival from last year. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and share that now. And I apologize if there's any lagging. <laughs> So that was just a little something that I found. It's just a little short video that I found of the festival from last that year. Is, so. that, that is really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love that. I'm it's shocked. I'm like, was I there? <laughs> <laughs> that was heartwarming. I'm yeah. excited. 
<laughs> no, I am too. It's going to be an amazing event. Well, actually, let's start off um, and talk about the logistics coordinator behind it all, Miss Jalisa. Can you go ahead and start off by telling people about yourself? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, obviously, I'm Jalisa. I am a native um, of Colorado. I was born and raised in Park Hill. Um, I am a mother. Uh, I work full time at the University of Denver. I plan events and I'm also um, completing my master's in August toot, toot, um, in organizational leadership uh, with a focus on leadership development. I'm super mm -hmm. excited to see where that degree will take me on the strategic realm of um, leading organizations and maybe even some board development and nonprofit. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about me. Um, I came to be with this festival, um, ooh, I think it was about eight years or so back. Um, I was working in Denver City Park um, as the event facilitator, and um, I wanted to see this festival succeed. Um, I grew up with this festival since I was younger, back in the 90s, seeing it from the large crowds, the parades, the art, um, the people. And um, <clears throat> they moved to City Park and just, you know, normal event challenges, right? And as a facilitator at the time under the city, I really wanted to see um, the festival excel. So um, I, I was there nearly every day. Um, and one particular day I was at a gate, um, kind of holding down the gate because there were some challenges with entry and exits. And um, one of the leadership came over um, who is one of my dear and best friends today um, at the time, eight years ago, Dana. And we just started connecting. I don't know what it was. We sat on that gate, I would say probably like two to three hours and just talked. And I think to this day, we still just talk for about two hours. And she's became one of the like best people to me and inspiring people that one allowed me to stay connected with this festival and then everything that i've learned over the years since inspired me even over COVID, um to get a degree in organizational leadership and leadership development um because working from the inside out you know you see a lot of things in organizations and you wonder um about change you wonder about sustainment you wonder about growth especially in this environment now in Denver, where um, our demographic with people of color has dispersed. Um, mm -hmm. So how do we sustain in something like that? And so that moment, I think, was forever kind of woven into my history with the festival. And I think it was almost fate at that point, um, meeting at that gate at that time. And so now I'm here um, happily talking to you guys about the festival. Um, and sharing my story in hopes that it can inspire more people to volunteer to keep this event going um, for 37 more years to come, um, or just finding some sort of passion in growth and leadership um, with the festival. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's nice. Um, from not being there with you all, um, my intrigue, me being intrigued is that it's in a black festival and not knowing whether how big or how small that's going to be. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, how long has the festival been going on and are the participants the same as far as vendors or do you get a lot more each year? Um, and how is the turnout with our people more so than anyone else? Yeah, so a little bit about the history of the festival. It started in, the idea started in 19... Um, 86. Um, and so our founders, uh, Oye Ayers and the late Perry Ayers, who just passed in uh, March, came up with an idea, with an idea to create a space. Um, and most people call the festival an event. I call it a movement because um, it created a space for visual artists, um, dancers, creative minds that are of color, um, to be themselves and show unity, self-esteem, um, and pride in the culture that we bring to the Denver area at that time. In the 1980s, there wasn't really a space for people of color to create. And so our founders wanted to make that space. 
right? Um, and so that's about a year later in 1987, that's when the first festival came to be um, in City Park at that time. Um, and so fast forward now to 37 years later, um, we've seen a lot of growth, especially in the 90s. I mean, people were coming nationally vendors were coming from different states people were coming from different states just to be here in this moment to just celebrate not just african-american history but at the african diaspora as well mm -hmm. um, heavy in those roots and so i would say in the 90s we were probably easily hitting at least 50 to 60 thousand people here at one time celebrating um this cultural movement and so you know, as time goes on, demographic shift, people change. The festival has maintained a standard of how we celebrate Black culture in Denver. And I think that standard is what keeps people coming back. Um, and that's that standard that I fully support as well as the members of the organization as well. Um, of course, there are those challenges when areas gentrify we lose our people, they disperse. And so I think that that's one of the challenges we have seen or have, I have noticed as far as how do we sustain in such a volatile environment where our people have been displaced from a lot of the communities they predominantly have lived in, which is Five Points, Park Hill, um, East Side. A lot of those names have kind of changed and transitioned, right? Um, East side is like Rhino District. Um, five points on Welton is still the name it is, but it's just a historic community. It's not listed as an African American historic community. So mm -hmm. you miss all of that. And I think the purpose of the festival this year, which is why our theme is grounded in our roots, is to kind of bring that back um, from our founders' view and how we. Um, view what the festival is supposed to stand on this year. So um, yeah, long-winded answer, but you know, I think that that is super important information to know where we're at as far as transitioning and sustaining now um, for the festival. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of our vendors, they are returning vendors. We are definitely working on expanding to get newer ones. Um, we got some newer vendors that I'm super excited about this year as well, but um, I'm sure there's a question about that later on, but yeah, I'm super excited to share that. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that the gentrification is by design, um, which is so un unfortunate, um, but you know, we as people are resilient anyway, so where we are, we will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you see, you definitely see that in the gathering of the Black Arts Festival. I mean, the Juneteenth Music Festival has definitely taken off here as well um, in, in how we just show up and support each other, even through the disbursement um, or the, the demographic changes, community changes. And, you know, not even just us, there have been people that have been very supportive that have moved into those neighborhoods that have showed up. Um, to experience just that cult, to have that cultural experience. And that is a side that I can also appreciate as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, as I was doing some research, um, I saw that the festival's name was changed a few times. Um, what was the final choice to make it the name that it is today? Um, so our, our official name is Colorado Celebration of African American Arts and Culture. It's a wonderful name. It's a beautiful name. It's a very long name. <laughs> right? um, so we then had to shorten it formally and just call it the Colorado Black Arts Festival. And it was Denver Black Arts Festival. It was Denver because at one point the focal point was just Denver, right? But like I said, we're everywhere. So then how do we embrace everyone and be welcoming of the people in Colorado Springs? I mean, Wyoming's in Wyoming, but it's Colorado. Go ahead and just add that in there. Um, you know, there's we're in Wyoming. And so then it expanded to Colorado Black Arts Festival to just be more inclusive of the Black body here in the state, as opposed to just being in Denver. 
go ahead. Um, because I'm a fatty, what type of food do you guys have out there? That that's a, you know. that's important. That's a good that's a good question. So we can have um barbecue, we have some African cuisine out there, um, which is really great. We have Jamaican food. Um, those are some of the range of vendors that we have. I know that some are returning this year. I'm looking forward to one of our vendors that will be doing a lot of uh, New Orleans cuisine and bringing that up here to us. Super excited to have them there. They're a new vendor. Um, so those are some of the range of food items that we have. And then we have, um, of course, snow cones. We have uh, nachos, the normal novelties for people. Mm -hmm. They're just like, don't want to go too deep into the cultural cuisine. They just have something simple, right? Mm -hmm. Those are usually the kids that are picky. But um, for the adults, you know, there's a wide range to choose from. That is awesome. So um, for those who are not too familiar, um, where will the festival take place and what will people expect at, mostly at the beginning part? Yeah, so um, this year, uh, well, so I'll start with location. The festival this year, and, ha and it has been in the last, I want to say maybe nine or 10 years, has, has, has been in Denver City Park West. So that's going to be where the zoo, the museum area is, but we're on the west side, which is York and 17th. Um, you can look up Historic East High School. We are right across the street from there um, in that space. Um, our location is very unique because we are like dead smack in the middle of the city. And it provides an opportunity for anyone, any direction to come to our, it, to, I'm like our park, come to the city's park <laughs> during our event and enjoy the festivities. Um, and there's plenty of parking. There's um, a lot of historic things to do in that park alone. Beautiful scenery um, from the museum to the pavilion. So you can see a lot more than just the festival if you're visiting mm -hmm out of state you can just enjoy walking around the park there's a big lake a historic lake they used to do paddle boating and fireworks back in the day um on that lake so you get more than just the festival being in that park we get to share a little bit of the history especially with people visiting um in town because that's an attraction anyway so it's super mm -hmm. neat for us to be in that location um with the festival nice. sounds like a perfect location actually yeah it's great and i'm like i can't wait till we grow and take over the whole park <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the events that uh, we can expect to occur during this movement as you say yeah so you know we're very unique we operate on three stages we have a gospel stage we have a main stage and our joda village stage our joda village stage mm -hmm. is our story telling stage. This is the one where we bring more traditional African um, culture, storytelling, sharing, dance, um, music. Our smaller bands typically play, play on Joda Village stage. There are gospel stages on Sunday. Um, that's ran by uh, Miss Deborah, and she has a few acts coming in um, for that stage. I believe one of them is Terrell Martin in the, C in the C2 mask choir will be there so that's amazing um and then oh and joe and trey grimes runs our joda village stage so shout out to trey we miss him and then um ron ivory does our kaumba stage which is our main stage and those are where we have our more of our newer artists live bands um majority of our all of our stages are pretty much live bands we really want to stick to that tradition of live music and experiencing that as opposed to tracks um and so Kaumba is that stage. That's where we'll have our national act at for this year, which will be announced. So um, I'll probably give our shameless plug at the end to follow our social media handles <laughs> um, to find out that information. Um, so that's just one of the performance stages that we have. We also have um, the Opalonga DPU Children's Pavilion, which is allow which allows for interaction with children to experience the art, arts and crafts, um, beautiful pavilion. Um, we have a few volunteers that come in and help the coordinator 
uh, manage that with the children. And that runs all weekend long um, for the festival. And then we incorporated Health Highways a few years back because we do recognize that there is a a gap in the in the health of Black Americans um, and Americans in the Black community uh, regarding how we attend to our, how we tend to our health, and so we True. added health highways just to incorporate. You know, I feel like for me, saying it's okay to talk about health, and we're here, you know, in any support or capacity, and so we have a lot of great health organizations coming in and tabling around that area or under that tent to be there to ask questions um, about health, mental health. Um, We're trying to do um, mental health, uh, art and healing and what that looks like to heal uh, mental health. So that's in the process as well. And I'm excited to see how that transpires this year um, and how we can continue to incorporate that into festival. Festival. into the festival throughout the year. Mm. Um, we are reactivating our hair care, our natural hair care and beauty pavilion. Um, and that ties into health and just black culture in general, because as women and men, like our hair and our crown is everything. And so how do we take care of that? Um, what does that mean for our mental health? And so our um, health care pavilion, this, or our hair and beauty pavilion will be ran by Curls on the Block this year um, by Annalise, and she's our coordinator over there. And so since this is a a reactivation, I'm also super excited to see what's going to happen there and attracting people and just getting people to talk about Black hair um, and how how beautiful it is, the effects of Black hair, and, you know, honestly, sometimes how mentally stressing black hair can be for environment. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that's not discussed. And so I'm interested to see okay. how that all comes out later on um, through that pavilion. I love it. That is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait for that. Morning Mimosas will be in the building that Saturday going live. And we're actually really excited to be doing that. So yeah, it'll be it's great. Be, yeah. it'll um, be an amazing experience. Yeah. And then on the art side, because we're an arts festival, we have a full artist row um that'll have about 14 to 15 artists there and i think the list is still growing which is a beautiful thing Mm -hmm. that will be sharing and expressing um their art um (laughs) i'm seeing someone from the festival they're on this call right now um i'll get back to that comment um but the artists (laughs) are exploring um sharing their art with us and then we'll also have a beautiful art garden um for the festival as well, where some of our featured artists, James Dixon and Autumn Thomas and Rob Hill, um, who have been amazing artists um, and contributors to the festival for the Art Garden this year. So super excited to display their work um, and for people to see it um, this year. So those are some of the elements. And then of course our marketplace was just our vendors, um, small businesses, um, coming in to share their art, their arts and crafts, things they've made, created, or selling um, traditional to festivals and things like that. So we have a lot happening. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly a lot you don't want to miss. Um, you're not going to. And you're not going to. Um, I'm not going to. So, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot happening. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Oh. It I'm sounds like, so amazing. Like, is- come on, July. Come on, July. Right. <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah, come on, July, but just slow down. Just a yeah, slow down. Just slow right, down. right. Just yeah, just yeah. The, the year's already like speeding by. So I know. I'm yeah, like, yeah, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 But um, we're actually gonna take a quick commercial break, um, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Jeanette Sears, the owner of Imuna Soaps and Essentials, a vegan and natural body care company. I believe that what you put on the outside of your body is just as important as what you put on the inside of your body. So that's why I use ingredients that are full of life and healing just how God created them to be. 
Imuna is committed to promoting ethical and sustainable sourcing practices. I, I believe that supporting local suppliers aids in building community wealth, which could lead to a better future. Now, I know that as a single mom, one of the last things I want to have to worry about is the ingredients of the stuff that I'm putting on my kids. So that's why the mission of Imuna is to create a high quality, trustworthy product that could improve the quality of all of our customers' skin. For more information, please feel free to visit our website at www.imunasoaps.com. That's www.emunahsoaps.com. Thank you. Hey guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to Morning Mimosas. Today we are speaking with Ms. Jalisa, the logistics coordinator for the Colorado Black Arts Festival. Um, we have been getting a lot of good information today and I'm excited for the festival that's in three weeks, right? Yes. So it's, um, it's getting here fast. It's getting here so quick. But um, I also wanted to ask a question about how can people, um, participate outside of the yearly event? How can people participate? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think we are in a phase where we um, want to expand um, the festival brand and not just show up once out of the year. Um, the last few years, we started the history of African-American music, where we basically ventured throughout the time um, each year of and explored African-American music um, in America. So that was one event. Um, another one is just community connection and involvement. Um, we hosted an artist exhibition, our first one at Understudy downtown, um, which is a, with Denver Theater District. And that was a pretty cool partnership and one that is still established now. Um, and I think as we grow and expand the festival brand from being just one just one thing we do out of the year to more of a, a yearly, monthly, quarterly event organization, um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people to be involved. Um, we meet and we meet, I meet a lot of people out that are just super interested in just wanting to just volunteer. Um, and so that engagement is super important. And then just building our um, planning committee base as well. Anyone that has great ideas, I'm happy to welcome, sit down with, talk with, um, and see what they have happening. I think our biggest focus and one of the focal points is just reconnecting and reengaging our artists. Um, we see a lot of new artists come through Denver, and we and I see the festival being that hub for those artists to um, share their art, especially with our community. We see a lot of them in a lot of the white spaces. Um, and so how do we get them to come in our space? And I think that's gonna come with a lot of um, reconnecting, re-engaging. Um, like I said, the demographics have changed and finding those spaces where um, artists hang out um, and just kind of reconnecting in that front, so. How can one donate to you, help you all reach your goals? Um, so we have, when you come to the festival, we do um, donations at the gate. That's one way to give. Um, we have a giving platform right now in memory of uh, Perry Ayers. That's another, that can be found at cobath.org um, if people want to give that way to keep the festival going. Um, but pretty much a lot of our um, income comes from operating um, the festival day of, as well as community grants and sponsorships of people. So just okay. connecting, engaging with people out in the community that support our mission and cause has been super helpful to um, keeping the festival going. But as far as community, if you just come to the festival, all that alone, you can donate and give. Our concessions, um, 
that's pretty much how we support and do our fundraising at the festival as well. So our lemonade stands, things like that help support the festival. Awesome. What what are the times for the for the festivals? Like what time do you can people start to come and what time do they absolutely have to be gone? Um so <laughs> the, <laughs> the festival is July, I'll give the dates. It's July 7th through 9th, so that's Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um Friday is our Youth Fest day where we and where our youth have the opportunity to um share their talents and their skills. We also have youth entrepreneurs that will be there over the weekend. And so you have the ability to support them and their business and give them experience to sell mm -hmm. their items, which is a dope idea, just having that opportunity. Um, the Boys and Girls Club of Denver from Vickers will also be presenting an art piece from their students. So um, you'll see that on Friday throughout the weekend. Um, did I get the time already? Friday will be one to eight. Okay. Um, Saturday on the eighth will be 11 to eight. And then Sunday um, will be 11 to seven. So we close about an hour early on Sunday, but it's still pretty jam packed day um, on those days. And then um, Saturday, Brother Jeff, who is a community staple here um, in Denver, um, his uh, cultural center will be hosting a celebration of the youth on Saturday too. Um, our founder, Perry Ayers, was a huge supporter of youth and youth growth, youth development in the arts. And so some of the programming will be surrounding the youth over the weekend too. That is super dope. Mm -hmm. Get them engaged no, early me. so that later on, you know, they're more productive in society and don't fall, you know, susceptible to things that are not good for them. Yeah, and it's agreed. Just, mm -hmm, finding those, finding those interest points for them, and mm -hmm. you know, how can they express through art or through dance or just spoken word? Like, there's so many realms for a lot of our youth to express themselves. But then, how do they get access to it and the opportunity to do it? And mm -hmm. I think that we do a lot for that opportunity. Um, this one time out of the year, I'm hoping it can be more, of course, as we grow our um, leadership base with the organization um, and supporting that vision too. I absolutely love that. That is absolutely amazing. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in, we are speaking with Delisa from the Colorado Black Arts Festival. Um, we have been sitting here and having an amazing conversation. We cannot wait. She just stated that the dates for this will be Friday through Sunday, July 7th through 9th. Um, so if you guys are coming in from out of state, please, please, please come to this festival. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, I don't have any questions at the moment. Does anyone want to go on the roundabout and ask a question right now? I think I've asked all I need to know. I'm really excited yes. about the event myself. I'm like, this is great. It's going to be a fun field pack day, a weekend, we should say. So, um, if anyone new uh, that's on the call or listening in, new Perry Ayers, we will be doing a processional on Saturday and a celebration of life for him. Um, Saturday at 1 p.m. and we'll just process through the park. Um, in dance, in song, in just love and support of him um, in, his, in his beautiful artistic mind. So we'll start at Brother Jeff's cultural stage at one, and then we will celebrate through the park and end at Joda Village, where there'll be a few performances from um, an African drum and dance um, group, um, as well as some spoken word. Um, just to share his story, his life, and just celebrate him for about an hour as it is, I think, something needed for everybody. And it's a community event that's free to the public. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I love that is. all of the bases are being touched from um, fun to educational and importance. Yes. Um, while we while we separate uh celebrate sorry our, our people um i especially really appreciate the youth and then the topic of health and not mm -hmm. just physical but 
mental and yep. visual because sometimes how we visually see ourselves you know emotional mental which goes down to our, to our overall health you know feeling good looking good being good so mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's certainly it's certainly unique um it's certainly certainly unique and i think as we grow and i'm hoping that the growth will help us touch a lot of people's lives newer lives yes. you know um i've been watching this festival since i could remember in the 90s um and so i'm hoping that the next group of children you know that were in my position in the 90s years later will be like oh i remember that and it was something mm -hmm. to remember for them or help someone you know um in that aspect so yeah it's super unique yeah and i hope more people will come like who's traveling especially on those dates will come and see and enjoy and then spread the word you know word of mouth mm -hmm. this is what happens on this time and so they start making it annually i'm mm -hmm. sad that i can't be there yeah i'm sad that you can't be there either i i haven't been um i haven't been to the festival in two years um, i didn't go last year but um, i did go the year before and it was absolutely amazing um, so i'm excited to come back this year and just breathe in the movement if that makes sense it's going to be well you know amazing. we will be here another few years so if you missed it this year you see you next year absolutely <laughs> yeah. that's true mm -hmm. Is it the same uh, dates every year? Yes, we are always the second weekend in July. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Um, we keep that date historically with the city. Um, okay. So we're pretty much grandfathered in at that time. Yeah. Sweet. That's good. It's good to find out I'm actually from New Mexico. So this will be my first time able to. Oh, yay. Oh, nice. See? Yeah. I've I never like learned anything, so this is uh, this is great. I'm, I'm thankful for Holly for introducing me, and this will be this will be fantastic. And you're such a breath of fresh air yourself, so I can't yes. wait. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You've been giving us all the information that we need. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a question, and it just like it skipped me. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I hate that. I hate having brain farts. This is this, and it's not the time for that either. Um, Goodness, goodness, goodness. So as far so obviously it's like three weeks before. So obviously the all the vendor slots have been filled, right? Because I saw something on the on the page a few days ago that it was like two days left to be a vendor. So has that all been filled out since yeah, I last so, that post? Yeah, you know, I think Friday was our Friday was our last day for vendors to come in and we were still getting vendors in. First to hear our Saturday headliner. <laughs> That's that's my bestie, y'all from the festival, all up in here supporting me, reminding me of things. I wasn't sure if I was if I should announce mm -hmm. that yet, um, but I guess she's like, I don't know, can I? I'm gonna have to message her. Yeah, yeah she's on here. <laughs> Just yeah. answer when you can. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Friday was the last day for vendors to sign up. Yes, thank you. Friday was the last day um, for <laughs> vendors to sign up. Um, but, you know, up until about midnight, we were still getting applications in. So I think right now if people submit, um, it will be a wait list. Um, and, you know, because people cancel, they can't make it. Life happens. But right now mm -hmm. I think we're in a pretty good position and an exciting position. We have some literary artists coming in. And I think since I've started, probably the most that I have seen, um, male and female African-American literary artists. Um, I think there's one that does children's books. So that's mm -hmm. exciting um, coming in. Um, we have some new clo a new clothing brand potentially coming in um, and a man from out of state coming in. He does his own kente cloth. So oh, nice. that is exciting that. to have him um, be part of the festival this year too um, as we look through some of the vendor lists. So yeah, some things to look forward to. That's awesome. I'm waiting on my yes on whether I'm, sorry, I'm waiting for Dana to respond because I know. You know, right. <laughs> um, let's see. She may have texted me. I don't know. That's absolutely amazing. Um, like I said, I I'm, I can't wait for that weekend. Um, I'm gonna be there early to set up my camera and everything. Um, yeah. so I can announce 
who the national act is um it's a all female band okay. that clue um all female band um they have the tune i got a meeting in the ladies room i got yeah a meeting, climax see. yes <laughs> <laughs> so Climax will be there on Saturday evening. So we're super excited to host them um, at the festival. And then Sunday is going to be uh, one of Colorado's own. He's from Colorado Springs or lives in Colorado Springs. It's Tony Exum. Um, and his violinist, let me get his name. Oh, he plays the violin. Sorry, guys. Plays, I have to do something about he instruments for sax, me. He plays the sax, I believe. He'll be oh, here no. Sunday, but then he'll have a violinist here with him as well. Um, I'm in cool. search of the name. I'm sorry, really quick. Okay, I'm gonna go on a quick tangent. I absolutely love the saxophone, guys. That that there's something about jazz and that instrument. Like, mm -hmm. just, I, I love the it's saxophone. It's the being band, so I feel you. It's great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Tony Exum and Dominique Hammonds. So okay, you can find them on YouTube. Beautiful violinist, and um, there he goes, Dominique Hammonds. Um, he does the violin and then Tony Exum plays the sax. So you can find them online or on YouTube if looking. But Climax is Saturday and then Tony Exum and uh, Dominique will close the festival on Sunday. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely Climax is going to be bomb, y'all. I used to yes. have their album. That's to show my age. I used to have their album. Vinyl. Oh, shoot. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to ask one more question before we go on another commercial break. Um, are you guys? Do you guys need any volunteers to help with like the cleanup for the three days? Or um, yeah, that's mostly it. Yes. Just be there or be square. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we are always looking for volunteers to help support. Um, be there or be square, exactly. <laughs> um, we're always looking for volunteers for the festival to help support cleanup uh maintenance um staff our gates uh just be helpful and be the face of the organization we with the amount of people that come through that park and the small leadership team that we have can't do it all and so our volunteers are tremendous to the support and just overall feel of a festival and people can get assistance right away there um, you can sign up to be a volunteer at colbath.org um, you just go under the volunteer um, tab and then you can sign up there. We're always looking for more people to help support um, over the weekend. Nice. Show up, show out, support. Mm -hmm. Like they said, be there, be square. Yep. And groups. And if you have a group, you have a leadership group or you're just part of a community group, those are helpful because you guys come in the masses so you mm -hmm. know sign up as a group and you know help us with the festival that weekend that's great perfect well guys we will be right back after this commercial from love shacks
Alrighty, welcome back to Morning Mimosas. We are sitting here with the Black Arts Festival Logistics Coordinator, Jalisa. Um, so uh, my next question actually has to do with, because I'm actually on the website, the scavenger hunt that happens during the festival. Now, how does that take place with such a large festival like that? Um, so typically we either give a vendor or a certain area where we want people to interact. They get a historical question and then they go to that booth and then they answer the question. They'll stamp it off and then take it back to the info booth for some sort of giveaway or something like that. It's related to um, all things the festival, essentially. And some people um, play along with it. Um, kids play along with it. Some adults um, interact with it. So it's super cool um, with the scavenger hunt. That's great. That is amazing. Um, if it, no one has a question, I have another one. Um, because you guys also, I, and I don't want to say this incorrectly. Um, is it the Bugaloo? Boogaloo. The Boogaloo. That was going to be, I was going to say it like that the, sec the second time. Um, celebration parade. Now, what does that entail? Um, when does that take place? Yeah, so I'll be completely transparent. This year, we um, put the Boogaloo Celebration Parade on hold. Um, we did it because we definitely want to rethink the celebration and the parade. It was very near and dear to our founder, and we want to do it right if we're going to host the parade right, like that. Right. And so we want to make sure that um, the experience we're providing is worthwhile for everyone involved. So this year we're just taking a break from it, um, but it has been traditional to the festival for years. Um, but this year in particular, you know, there was a need for it to just be on pause just so that we can make sure we're delivering the experience that's needed for everybody involved, participants, those watching the community. Um, we need to make sure it's worthwhile to shut those streets down. <laughs> Um, to do it. So um, it is on pause this year, but next year it'll definitely be back on and um, in full force. Last year we had the uh, the New Orleans, the Black Indians come in from New Orleans, which was really cool. Um, they had their, their band, their brass band, and then the Indians came in in their nice traditional garb and, you know, um, uh, celebrated with us through the parade. We have a few of the drum and drill and dance teams that participated, um, car clubs, community groups. So we have a good number of people, but we definitely want to grow it more um, in the years to come. That's good. Yeah. I also love how everything is intentional. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the best and not just putting something out there. I love it. Love it, love it. Yeah, it's important, you know. Um, we, we're we not in a space anymore where we can just do things just to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be intentional, and we have to be intentional in order to grow um, yes. and sustain as an organization. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our decisions, a lot of the things that we do are part of that growth and sustaining and just driving new people and continuing to keep our old people engaged with the festival. Okay. I love it. I love it. Like I said, um, this is going to be an exciting event that's taking place in three weeks, guys. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm truly honored to be interviewing someone from the festival. Um, didn't think that this interaction would take place, but here we are today. And it's going to be, like I said, an amazing thing. Louis, um, so my next question has to do with um, rain, shine, snow, because Colorado is unpredictable. It could snow in July if it wanted to. So um, so does the festival take place, whether rain, snow, or does it, or have you guys ever came across a situation where you guys had to cancel it one year? Oh, at any yeah. Point in time? You know, like you said, Colorado weather is super unpredictable. And we will try to go rain or shine so long as the safety of the participants and those volunteering or involved are safe. And so um, if it's like torrential downpour and electricity at that point is mm. um, at risk or lightning, then we'll shut the festival down temporarily 
see if the weather passes. If it passes, we'll just start back up again like we never left, you know. That's good. Um, <clears throat> there's certainly adjustments that need to be made, but it is pretty much rain or shine unless it's like completely, we just cannot operate. Um, we will still continue to operate um, for the community at that point. That is awesome. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, you two ladies, you guys have any questions for her at this time? No, I love that everything was answered. I'm like fully satisfied and sad that I'm not going to be able to be there. Oh man, well we will miss you next year. Yes, yes, we'll next make year. Sure. Next year, next year, we'll always be here. Um, just remember, if you want to learn more, that's going on with the festival. Learn about some of our vendors coming in. You can just follow us on Facebook at Colorado Black Arts Festival. We also have an Instagram, um, which is Cole Black Arts Festival. Um, if you're interested in following so you can like, subscribe and get information on what's taking place at the festival. Um, we'll also provide some live updates on those pages for folks, especially weather. Um, if you <laughs> <laughs> And then also feel free to visit our website um, as we start to update the things that are going on in the next couple of weeks. Um, feel free to go there and, you know, sign up to be a volunteer or just check in with the page to see what's happening. And I will make sure to put all of that information in the description. Um, but we are gonna take our last and final commercial break and then we're gonna head out here in a few minutes. But we're gonna do our last commercial break and I'm actually gonna just go ahead and say who it is. It is our Lily business, Be Divine. Hey. And here Thank she you. goes, of course. Love it, love it. I like that throw over that that black hoodie, mm -hmm. the long yeah. one. That's hey, completely my style all the way with some boots in the fall and call it a day. <laughs> and I if like you guys that. look like you can get a good uh fifteen percent off of a twenty-five dollar purchase with using uh divine fifteen at checkout. So that's just a special for y'all for tuning in today to morning mimosa. So Bye. Bye. Okay. Writing that down right now. <laughs> and if you need it, message me. Message Holly. We'll get a hold of each other somehow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I absolutely I'm love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to Morning Mimosas. You guys see us, you know, having a little bit of girl chatter here. You guys, you guys know how we do. Um, mm -hmm. We are speaking with Miss Jalisa of the Colorado Black Arts Festival. Um, we are winding down to like the last few minutes. So I just wanted to ask you guys, if you guys had any final thoughts about the festival, I, I can go first if you guys want me to, but um, I don't like to be selfish. So anybody want to speak first? I think she's one that and answered all my questions. So still the shine girl. <laughs> well, um, I'm just going to say I'm completely looking forward to the festival. Like I said, Morning Mimosas will be there on location on July 8th. Um, we will be going live exactly at 11 in the morning. So you guys will catch a glimpse of all the wonderful things that are going to be going on during the festival. Yeah, we're going to sit for a little bit, but we're going to walk around. We're going to take a look at all the amazing things and capture the movement, capture the beauty of it all. So I just wanted to go ahead and say that. I'm excited for that. Got my, you know, I shined my camera and my tripod. So yeah. <laughs> we don't it. It's going to be great. Yeah. We can chill Constant. over. They have, oh, I forgot to mention, we have a beer garden, just one that you can lay back, 
listen to some music, hang out, enjoy the evening and the day, and then go walk around. <laughs> With that being said, are there any uh, black breweries? I've never, I've, I'm interested. You know, I think that's something we um, definitely can research and work on and open to that um, here in Denver. It's mm -hmm. few in between, but, you know, yeah. definitely open to that. Um, we have a, our donor or our sponsor for the festival um, with Coors. So they um, supply a lot of our items for alcoholic beverages, um, which is helpful for the festival. Are there any other vendors or sponsors that you would like to shout out? Um, good one. That was a I was going to ask that too. This is a good one. You know what? I don't think that, you know, um, SCFD for sure, you know, with, you know, they definitely came in the community acts fund um, has been um, tremendous to the support of the festival. Um, we have our returning sponsors with uh, Denver theater district, which is supporting a lot of our, um, our festival aesthetics. Um, during that time. So I would say um, those for sure. And then Brother Jeff's Cultural Center. Brother Jeff has been very su uh, supportive of the festival over the years mm -hmm. um, and a huge community activist. Um, everyone knows of Brother Jeff and he's been involved with the festival for so long. Um, another shout out, an important member. And then, you know, I want to shout out just the team. The team of the Colorado Black Fe Arts Festival are... Um, our coordinators, EDs, um, you know, everyone that has taken the time over the last few months to help plan the festival and actually return every single yeah. year. Um, I would definitely like to give a shout out and a huge thank you to them for all of their support over the years. Shout Most out to you guys. The people behind putting it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. It takes a team. It takes a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely. Does. I am super duper excited. Once again, um, we are going to go ahead and close out, but we had the beautiful opportunity to speak with the Black Arts Festival um, Logistics Coordinator, Jalisa. Um, and like I said, this is Morning Mimosas, but before I do all of that, we are going to formally welcome Lily to Morning Mimosas as our co-host. We are really, really glad to have you on as not only just as the co-host, but an actual friend to me. Yes. So um, I'll be a friend I, to whoever needs it because I'll support you, I promise. <laughs> she's really, really good with that. But as you guys know, this is Morning Mimosas. Thank you, Black Arts Festival, for allowing little old me to in infiltrate. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not <laughs> that that that's that that's my legal jargon. You know me, I'm going to <laughs> start my little career so i had to you know throw that in there but thank you guys for um allowing me the honor to interview you guys especially you miss jalisa thank you so much for your insight um but this is morning mimosas where we put value in criminal justice we promote healing and education for our black community you guys stay tuned bye 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 humans